Okay, thank you very much. Didn't think it'd take so much just to set something up so that I can be seated uh, so I don't get so tired standing and delivering a sermon, but thank you very much. Brother, any way you want to look at it, it is a sad commentary, yet we know the generation that God delivered from the Egyptian bondage all died in the 40-year wandering in the wilderness. And brethren, we need to please understand or realize that perhaps the main reason these people did not go into the promised land was because of their sins of grumbling and murmuring and complaining. As we know, they did these things. They grumbled and they murmured and they complained frequently. And as a result of this, that whole generation, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, all died because of it in the wilderness. In fact, in Numbers chapter 14, not going to go there, but verses 20 through 23, God states that Israel had tested him, and the scripture says, these 10 times. And brother, we know this is a rhetorical statement because actually, if we go through and we count and we list them all out, we find at least, at least 40 recorded times when Israel grumbled or murmured or complained or tested God. So with that in mind, please go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, we begin. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. We know these verses, but we're learning from these things. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea. Continuing on in verse 5. But with many of them, we actually realize and come to the understanding that all of that generation died in the wilderness. That generation that came out above the age of 20. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. I think a very good question for us to ask here is, so what does this have to do with us? What does this have to do with you and me as, as true believers today, part of the body of Jesus Christ, the church of God today? And the answer is very, very simple. Maybe everything. Let's continue reading here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. The point being is, in other words, do not do what they did. Verse 10. Neither murmur you as some of them actually all of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Verse 12, wherefore or therefore let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Brethren, this is a warning. This is written. All of these things happen. They're written down. They're recorded for us in the church of God today as a warning. We're going we're gonna to read this, and we're going to see this in just a few moments. We see that in Romans 14, verses 1 through 1 and 2, and we'll see that in a moment. So here's the thing. No, it was not because of Pharaoh and, uh, and this incredible, huge, mighty Egyptian army. No, it was not because of the Canaanites who had been entrenched so long in the land. 
No, brethren, it's very simple. It was because of their grumbling and murmuring and complaining hearts and attitudes. What we need to understand, this is a serious topic. It's not just one of these, oh, we're going to look at Israel's things that they did and how bad they were. No, all of these hap things are happened and written down so that we would learn from them because it's a warning. It is a warning for us. All of these things happen and all of these things were recorded for us so that we would not do what they did. I have entitled the sermon, you can probably guess it, Grumbling and Murmuring and complaining. So today, we're going to examine some of the points about this important topic. First of all, I want us to take a look and notice the word grumble. The two Hebrew words for grumble are lun, L-U-N, and regain, R-A-G-A-N. Lun implies Growling. And regain is a whispered rebellion. In other words, a low tone, like under your breath. It's that kind of thing. That's the sense of the word. Then in the New Testament, the Greek word for grumble means grumble or complain or grump. So I think that we begin to see these words give us the sense of Israel's heart and attitude and ours when we grumble. Stating it as simply as possible, grumbling is growling against God. Why did you do that? I mean, you know, he did that. I mean, you know, I mean, it's that kind of thing. God hates that. We're going to see as we go along why he hates this so much. Look a little further at this word, lun. It comes from a root word that simply means to stop by or to lodge or to spend the night. So looking at even more fully, what it is telling us is it means to overstay or to wear out one's welcome by complaining. And the implication is all night. It goes on and on. It means to be inflexible and demanding. The picture that we get from the Hebrew word and the use of this word, it's like a thankless gets who feels entitled and complains about whatever the host has generously provided that it is not enough, or it's the wrong sort of food, or it's the wrong kind of room, or it's not good enough, or whatever, and it goes on and on. So the basic principle, or the basic picture, is that an annoying guest who wears out his host with complaint after complaint, there is more to this, but I think you get the point. So let me just give you kind of the sense of it. Israel began to wear God out. Now, can God really be worn out? Can he be overtaken? You know, and, and it's the sense of it. It's not that God really happens, that he can be, that we can wear him out, that we can wear him down. It's not that, but it's the sense of it. It's with their grumbling and their murmuring and the complaining, God had enough. Because you see, brethren, when we grumble, which is a sin, and all sin is against God, we are stating that we have a distrust, a distrust in God's complete rule over our lives. It's like we are stating not good enough. The word is defined as to complain in low murmuring tones, to grumble. Sounds like running water. 
so therefore, when we grumble, like Israel grumbled, we are in essence, we are announcing, we are proclaiming, we are stating our distrust in God's total rule over our lives. I told you this is a serious topic. Now, in the Hebrew, the word murmur has the sense of malicious whispering of slander. And the sense of the Greek also suggests indignation and fault finding. So I think that we would all agree. There is an obvious danger in grumbling and murmuring and complaining. So with this in mind, I want us to notice some information about Israel and their grumbling and their murmuring and complaining. I mean, after all, we are told it happened and it's recorded for us that we don't do what they did. So we can learn from this, and that is the intent. So let's take a look at some things about them for examples for us. In the books of Exodus and Numbers, God records for us his, I, I have in my notes, dramatic and exciting deliverance of Israel out of the Egyptian bondage. It was dramatic and it was exciting. And I want us to please also remember that God was not only going to deliver his people, and he did, he was also moving them forward toward the promised land that was promised to them as their inheritance. And so we see Israel's grumbling reached a uh, a state of intense excitement and anxiety and, and uneasiness after the 10 spies returned and gave the false reports and the people became frightened by the report of the Canaanites' might. So let's go there. Let's go to Numbers 14, beginning in verse 1. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. Numbers 14, 1 through 4, and I'm going to read it from the New American Standard Bible. Numbers 14 in verse 1. Then all the congregation raised their voices and cried out, and the people wept that night. And all the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the entire congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if we had died in this wilderness. So why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become plunder. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now, we've got to remember, Egypt has been destroyed. There's no way these people are thinking clearly. We understand that. Verse 4, so they said one to another, let's appoint or let's choose another leader and return to Egypt. So, brother, we begin to see, I think very clearly, that grumbling and murmuring and complaining implies that we don't trust God. And yet, brethren, the point is God expects us to trust him in every situation. He expects us to trust him in every situation with a knowing that he is a loving father, with a knowing that he is unchangeable, with a knowing that he is completely trustworthy. Grumbling like all sin is against God. So are murmuring and complaining. So I think a good question for us to ask is, so what is the difference between groaning and grumbling? Well, putting it as simple as, as we can get it, groaning is complaining to God. Grumbling is complaining about God. 
And what we need to realize as believers today, that grumbling and murmuring and complaining from, come from a root of bitterness that is so deep within our very being, so deep within our core of who and what we are, that we become blinded to it when it creeps in upon us. I mean, there's, you know, I just gave, just read that verse and it said, so let us appoint or let us choose another leader and we're going to go back into Egypt. They're blinded. They're so bitter as what has happened to them. They're blinded. They don't even, they don't even think about it that Egypt has been destroyed. There is no Egypt to go back to. Go with me to Ephesians 4. Beginning in verse 29, Ephesians 4, 29, let no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Hebrews 12, verse 15, Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently lest any man fail to the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby Many be defiled. Brethren, this, this topic is a very important lesson that we are often to learn from Israel's examples. God hates sin. And grumbling and murmuring and complaining are sins. And sin is something God is not going to tolerate especially in the lives of his people. Okay, now I want us to go back and read again where we read earlier, reading actually more of the account to see how God really feels about this sin among his people. We know the people grumbled and murmured and complained against God and Moses and Aaron, and then even against Joshua and Caleb because they gave a true report. What we see here is how Moses and Aaron began to plead with the people to trust God because he had provided everything they needed and yet they were going to have no part of it. They were not going to be listening to what it said. So what we see is the people picked up stones, rocks, to throw at Joshua and Caleb because of their true report. I and mean, we're going to read this. We're going to see this. And the glory of God appeared and interceded on their behalf, and God's anger burned very hot. He was so angry at all of this. Numbers 14, verse 1. This time we're going to read it out of the King James. Numbers 14 in verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up a voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God, we had died in this wilderness? And why, why, and wherefore has the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? See, why did he bring us here that we're just going to be destroyed, you know, by these Canaanites who have overtaken the land and all of that? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? So they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Verse 5, then Moses and, and Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. 
and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. So we got, so here's a picture. We've got Moses and Aaron, and we've got Joshua and Caleb. They're united together. They're on a united front here. And they, meaning Joshua and Caleb, and they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. It, if the Lord delight in us, in other words, we do what he wants us to do, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not you against the Lord, neither feel you the people of the land. For they are bread for us. In other words, they are nothing to us. We're going to, their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Verse 10. And all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared into the tabernacle of the congregation for all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long? Will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed unto them? How long, you know, why aren't they believing me? How long is, what is it going to take for them after all that I've done? Verse 12, I will smite them with, with the pestilence and then disherit them and make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. And we know that Moses begged God to show his people mercy. And God did. And God did. However, what we need to understand is, and this is the point, there are consequences for grumbling and murmuring and complaining against God. That grumbling generation would not see the promised land. Only their children would go in. Now, that's major. That's a major lesson. I see it something like, I mean, on a low scale. Here are parents who were taking their complaining and ungrateful children on the road trip of all road trips for a lifetime, you know, lessons, things that they're going to be able to see. And they grumble and they complain, you know, are we there yet? It's hot. It's cold. I'm thirsty. I'm this. I, I, I'm not picking on children. I know we understand this is an illustration. God had heard enough whining. God hated it. He still hates it. God takes grumbling and murmuring and complaining seriously. Simply, it is sin and God hates sin. I want you to go with me to James chapter 5. And I want us to notice, please notice with me these warning words over here in James 5. Verse 9, and I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible. James 5, verse 9. Do not complain against one another, believers, so that you will not be judged for it. Look, the judge is standing right at the door. Reading this from the NIV. Do not grumble one. Do not do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged because the judge is standing at the door. In other words, it's referring to Jesus Christ. He's looking. He's looking. And I think when I'm going through this and I'm thinking, Many of us might be very quick to start thinking about God's anger or wrath and how it relates to many different sins, such as sexual sin or murder or child trafficking 
or whatever it is, sin, that you might want to list out. But brother, what I want us to understand here is the sin at the top of Jane's mind is grumbling. Now, are all of these things bad? Of course they're bad. It is stating God cannot be trusted. So let me ask all of us, I think a very serious question. Do we take grumbling this seriously? In the last sermon that I gave, I entitled it Jesus and the Serpent on the Pole. I made a statement, and it does apply to this sermon today. And I want to quote, just read the passage that I'm talking about from that sermon. And so I quote my own sermon. So here is the point, brother. We all know God takes sin seriously. I mean, consider the fact that he is not even going to turn his eyes away from those sins that most of us would probably call insignificant or of little of no importance. You know, like grumbling. And yet, we also need to realize God's judgment and mercy are inseparable like opposite sides of the same coin. A major lesson in this is clear. A major lesson in all of this is clearly God delivers judgment and then he delivers mercy. This is an important concept we all need to realize, end of quote. Therefore, brethren, if grumbling and murmuring and complaining are to be stopped, and they are, because all sins are to be stopped, then grumbling and murmuring and complaining must begin in our own heart. It has to begin with us. It has to begin putting it personal. It has to begin with me. I need to stop it. I need to recognize it. I need to step up to it and realizing that I have done it and I need to stop doing it. And we all need to make that statement. I read a plaque or a sign the other day and it stated, and I quote, to grumble is to leak darkness where we were made to shine. I want to reread that. To grumble is to leak darkness when we were made to shine. I like that statement. I like that. I like that quote. And God willing, there's going to be a part two on grumbling and murmuring and complaining. Coming soon. So stay tuned. The ironic blessing. And the Lord spoken to Moses saying, speaking to Aaron and to his son saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel saying unto them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. We are so blessed. Brother, we are so blessed. Any way you want to look at it, we are so blessed. And we're going to grumble and murmur and complain against God? God bless you all. Happy Sabbath.